welcome back everyone to another episode of the rapid road to glory in 2017 so this is round number four that you are looking at right now and now that you've seen uh, both the previews at the very start of the video uh, let's get on to the analysis now I need to remind you that this week is the final week that I'm technically on a holiday so uh, please comment on this video on what you want me to play in the next round always make sure to write down a charity of your choice in the comment section below so that I will be able to donate to it by the end of the series. Now let's get on to the first game that I played with Luis Meza Paz and I was white in this game and he was black. So the game pretty much started off with the first move e4 followed by e5, knight f3, knight f6, bishop c4, knight takes e4, castles d5, bishop b5, check c6, bishop a4, knight d7 and d3. So as you can see in this position that I'm actually pawned down as his bar here is showing you that black is actually much better here um, but here he played knight e to f6 and rook to e1 I'm pinning that pawn and attacking it twice so he played bishop to d6 a pretty normal move but then here I play knight takes e5 I just take the pawn uh, which is there available for me um, knight takes e5 is played d4 knight to d7 which is not uh, really what I would recommend because knight to g4 was possible because after knight g4 then h3 Knight takes f2, king takes f2, and then queen h4 check, then he has this massive attack. So here he missed this, in fact, and he played knight to d7. Um, d takes e5, bishop to c7, and now I just push my pawn forward just a tiny bit so that um, I'm actually causing havoc in his camp. So he plays knight to f6, then I play e takes f7, king takes f7, c4, followed by d4, bishop g5, bishop b6, c5, rook e8, and bishop b3. So here I've managed to convert the position from being quite bad for me to an okay type position. So bishop to b3, what it does is that it actually pins the bishop to the king. It also uh, increases the attack on the bishop itself because the bishop is pinned to uh, the rook on e8. So b6 was played. I played bishop takes e6 check. Rook takes e6, rook takes e6, king takes e6, queen b3 check. So I just brought my queen out and I just wanted to see what he does. In terms of development, my rook and knight still need developing, but I can get to that later is what I thought in that current position. So queen to d5, c takes b6, queen takes b3, a takes b3, bishop takes b6, knight to d2, and then king to f7. Uh, so he moves the king back here in this position. You can see that it's quite equal, the, uh, the engine says. And then uh, I've got these double pawns, however, and he's got a pass pawn over here. So I have to always look out for this pass pawn. So it's reaching the end game now. Knight to c4, bishop to c5. Rook a6, d3, knight e5 check. King f8. Now uh, something interesting was the knight takes d3. Uh... It's quite interesting, but the only thing is it's actually detrimental to my position because he can just play rook to d8, threatening checkmate on d1, and I have no way to stop it without losing my knight. But that's not exactly what happened. I played h3, bishop takes f2, king takes f2, uh, which is nice tactic that he played there, but it in fact activated my king a little bit, so I wasn't quite afraid, I wasn't that much afraid to lose that pawn in the, uh, on f2, to lose that pawn on f2. So I kind of wanted him to do that. So he plays the knight out, uh, pretty much proper exchange. I take that pawn on d3, so now he doesn't necessarily have any threats. So he plays knight to e6, I take that pawn, rook d8 check, king c4, knight f4, and then knight to c6, rook to c8, and then here I should have just played b4, pretty normal and pretty easy win for me. But here I just decided to move the king a bit too far and uh, kind of gave him a bit of chances over here. So if we uh, skip forward a few more moves, takes pawn here. What I'm trying to do is I'm going to take those two pawns on g7 and h7. So moving on, king g8, rook takes, king h8, rook c7. If he moves away the rook from the 8th uh, rank, then I deal with, deal with a checkmate by doing rook to c8 if he's not careful. So check, king here, push here, over here, and the game is beginning to get slightly equal. So uh, in the end here, you see that the game can't be anything but a draw. Uh, moving forward, 
and king d3, rook f5. The reason that I played rook f5 is because I wanted to attack his knight. If he takes my knight, I take his. Now, I have to be careful because uh, I have to not move my king into squares that it is going to be checked by the knight because if that happens, he takes my knight with the tempo. So, I'm here king h7 because of if king to g7, he just plays knight to e6 check and voila, my knight is gone. So, rook b7, king g8, takes, takes. And he just pretty much wanted to go for a draw. So, um, he's he's pretty much settled for a draw, but um, uh, the stakes were a bit high in this match, so I didn't really want to draw. So, I had quite a bit of a time advantage, about 5 minutes, so as long as I didn't 3-4 repetition, I would have been fine. So, here we go, played on a few more moves. And it turns out there's a rook on rook. So technically, if your opponent offers a draw, please take it in this position. I'm just being a bit special um, because I really wanted to win this game and increase my rating. But um, it, this is against chess ethics, what I'm doing here. So make sure not to do that in your games when you get a position like this, which is completely drawn. It just makes you look silly. So here we go, keeping on going. And now he's losing a bit more time. He's losing quite a bit of time. He's now moving his king back. There we go. I'm making zero progress. And after rook c5, move number 85, he ran out of time. As it says over here, time ran out. So this was quite an interesting game. I, I pretty much blundered a pawn at the very start. He could have had lots of initiative if he sacrificed his knight uh, properly on knight takes f2, as I said before. And uh, with that being said, quite an interesting game, um, a quite a drawn game. In fact, look at this position; it's complete draw. But I was being a bit of a uh, bit of, a bit of a character here, and uh, decided that I wanted to go for the win instead on time. So. Uh, this is something that you could do technically in, in a, a blitz game. If you had l about 10 seconds left each, you keep on playing until his time runs out. Um, so it is a strategy, but not in rapid games. So make sure that when you're playing a chess game, do not do this whatsoever uh, in a long game because um, there's people obviously spectating and they will think very, very low of you. So we go on to the next game. Next game is a special one that I played against Shailish Patil, uh, 7330, 1539, rating versus myself in 1658. So my rating from before at 1633 went up to 1658 because I won that previous game. Uh, this game was quite interesting. So we started off with d4, d5, c4, d takes, c4, knight, c3. Knight f6, e3, e6, a3. So he's now stopping me from going bishop to b4. And the reason why he's doing that is because he doesn't want to go into normal Numza Indian lines. So he wants to go for a normal collie system. I think he hasn't developed his knight out yet, but he will soon. So bishop to e7, bishop takes e4, castles, knight f3. So this is a simple collie system where... Um, I have taken on c4 and he's done bishop takes c4 uh, instead. Um, but his knight on c3 is a, is a bit strange. Normally in the collie, the knight is on d2 instead of c3. So let's just see how this game went. b6, castles, bishop b7, rook e1, c5, b4. So here he just loses his pawn pretty much because he didn't want uh, to lose his center pawn. Uh, because uh, in the previous move, instead of b4, uh, b, uh, d takes c5 was in fact possible, but it just gives me a centralized uh, bishop on c5. True uh, that he could push it away by playing b4 afterwards, then it's just an equal game. But here what he played was detrimental, so b4 was a pretty bad move at the, as the engine shows over here. It's actually a 1 minus... Uh, for me, which means that black is ahead. So c takes b4, a takes b4, bishop takes b4, bishop b2, queen c8, queen b3, bishop takes c3, bishop takes c3. Now, if you look here in terms of an assessment, I've got this really dangerous open file over here. Um, so uh, pretty much I've got a slight attack, but he's got the two bishop advantage. I have to do something about that. So here I played the wrong move. I think bishop takes f3 isn't quite good against the two bishops. Um, should have kept that bishop and played something like, I don't know, bishop to, bishop to d5 maybe. After bishop takes d5, he takes d5. I'm doing fine because I've got a centralized pawn and I can develop around it. But g takes f3, I've doubled his pawns and I just wanted to see what he'd do here. Queen b7, um, I don't really like this move, I don't know why I played it, honestly, it does nothing. But e4, he's slightly ahead, I think, in this position, even though the engine says otherwise. 
uh, knight to c6, and here we go. This was the worst move that I could have ever played because the reason is it's quite detrimental to my position. Uh, true, I'm bringing the knight out, but it was the wrong square to bring it out too. And I'm going to pay the price quite soon after d5. He's now threatening bishop to f6, doubling my pawns. He's also attacking my knight. He's also attacking, you know, opening up by playing d takes e6. So I had nothing else to do but to play e takes d5. After e takes d5, knight d8, bishop takes f6, g takes f6, rook a d1 is not a move that I would have played in that position. So he, in this position, queen to b2 is incredibly sufficient because I, there was there was no way that I could defend that pawn without moving my king out to g7. So, he didn't play that. He played rook a d1, uh, king h8, king g2, rook g8 check, king f1, queen d7. So now I've gained a bit of the advantage back again, only to give it away quite soon after uh, I stuff up the move order and play queen check first and then rook check. Rook check wasn't really the best idea. Um, what I should have done is kept the pressure and played something like queen to g4. Um, or simply I could have just played knight to d6 because if bishop takes, because if bishop takes g6, then I just take the queen on c3. So rook e8, check, king d2, rook takes, rook takes, knight d6, and now he is completely ahead. He takes me, I take his queen, takes, takes, and rook against knight. He should be able to win here. Unfortunately, he didn't because he decided that he's going to blunder a piece after king g7, rook takes a7. So, complete blunder on his behalf, but to be fair, my knight is quite strong in that position. It's threatening if the rook moves away to about d7. I have, you know, knight to e4, something like that. Um, but I don't think I can stop that pass pawn, so he might be completely winning here. Uh, so rook takes a7 right to b5 and the game ended soon after because he had He didn't have the active piece player that I had and he was uh, soon uh, Losing so he resigned in this position and that was the game so with both these games in fact I'm not exactly happy with how, how I played so uh, with that being said I hope you guys enjoyed this video Please leave a like if you did um, also comment on this video in terms of what you want me to play in the next video, like each, like each other's comments so that uh, the most voted comment is the one that gets picked the most and um, picked. Um, so uh, please do that. Subscribe if you haven't, because this series will be coming out each week. I'll be pumping these videos out according to uh, whatever you guys comment on. So be prepared for that by subscribing. Also, um, make sure that you click that little bell every time that you subscribe because um, uh, you should get notifications every time that I upload and um, by doing so you will never miss a video that I post up which means that you can comment whenever you want uh, every time that I upload a video. So uh, always make sure to do that. Check out some of the other series that I have on my channel and uh, persuade your friends to come and watch this and upload your comments as well. So with that being said I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, I will see you next time.